In this auspicious evening, I extend my warm greetings to all present here for the 8th Chavra Annual Lectures. Dear Reverend Dr. Paul Achandi, Rector, Dharmaran College. Dear Reverend Professor Kurian Kachapalli, President, DVK. Reverend Dr. Shaji Kochutara, Dean, Faculty of Theology. Respected Deans, Directors, Reverend Sisters, Fathers, Invited Guests, Members of the Staff, Academic Fraternity of DVK, Brothers and my dear friends, most cordial welcome to our webinar on Human Capital Formation. Center for Study and Research on St. Kuriyaku Salayas Chavara was born out of an initiative from Dharmaran College and was later entrusted to the Faculty of Theology, DVK, in order to spread the views of St. Chavara with the contextual application. Since 2013, annual lectures have been conducted as a series. COVID-19 atmosphere this year has given us the opportunity to connect to a greater audience who are interested in the research and study on different perspectives of St. Chavra through this webinar. Contributions of St. Chavra in the literary and cultural fields make him a trailblazer in the field of human capital formation. He became the initiator of educational renaissance in Kerala. The Center for the Study and Research on St. Kuriyako Salayas Chavra focuses on his amazingly far-sighted vision and magnificently multifarious mission. The Center proposes create programs for delving deep into the depth and dimensions of his life and its lasting influence on the religious and secular culture. This year, we are fortunate to have three scholarly personalities to take us deep into our theme, St. Chaura's Contributions to Human Capital Formation. Professor Joseph Vargis Kuritara, CMI, Professor Andrew Thomas Kennedy, and Sister Udaya, CMC, are excellent resource persons who can decode hitherto untraversed cues of St. Chaura in the field of human capital formation. So I wish an enjoyable evening with a rich blend of our enlightening session. Thank you all. Now I invite the CMC sisters of Nyanodaya for the invocation. Yeah. 
Many thanks to you, dear sisters from Nyanodaya, for soulfully invoking God's presence amidst us. This webinar is organized under the auspicious of the Faculty of Theology, DVK. It is my present privilege to invite Professor Dr. Shaji George Kuchdara, CMI, Dean of the Faculty of Theology, for his welcome note. You have to unmute me. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello, good evening. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Ah, yes, okay. Father. I was not able to unmute. That's why I asked. Uh, so, Father Paul Ashanti, CMI, Director of Dharmaram College, Professor John Andrew Kennedy, Sister Udaya, and Father Joseph Pergis Kuritara, the speakers of the day, deans, directors, invited guests, sisters, fathers, professors of DBK and students and friends. Good evening. It's my privilege to welcome you all to this conference on human capital formation, organized by the Center for Study and Research on St. Chavara. St. Chavara was a man of God and a man of radical reformation. His unique contributions in the field of religious, ecclesia, and social life were really pioneering. Center for the Study and Research on St. Chavara, a great spiritual leader of his time and an enlightened visionary, focuses on serious study and rigorous research on his prophetic personality and manifold contributions. Father Jomo, the director, has already explained this in detail. Today, for this annual lecture, we are focusing on one of his unique contributions, namely that in the field of human capital formation. Also, as Father Jomon already mentioned, this center is a collaborative work of Tharmaram College, Tharmaram Vidya Chetram, and Nyanodaya CMC Institute. I am privileged to welcome Father Paul Achandi CMI, who has accepted our invitation to deliver the inaugural address for this conference. He is the Rector of Tharmaram College, Pro Vice Chancellor of DVK, and the Chancellor of Christ University. He has served the CMI congregation in various capacities like the Prior General, Provincial, Vigar Provincial, Professor in Management Studies, etc. Above all, he is a devotee of St. Chavara. Father Paul Ashanti, on behalf of all, a most cordial welcome. Father Kurian Kashapalli, the president of DVK, is unable to be present with us from the beginning of uh, uh, this conference due to another assignment that he had already taken up. I thank him for his support for the activities of the center and welcome him also with the hope that he may be able to join us later. The resource persons today, Father Joseph Argis Kuritara, Professor of uh, Mathematics at Christ University, a great writer and educationist. He has already published more than 100 articles in mathematics in international and national journals. I may be mistaken, this is the number um, one week back. So within this week, uh, I do not know how many more. Besides, a number of articles on St. Chavara, on Eastern theology, liturgy, and so on. Professor Kennedy Andrew Thomas is the director of the Center for Education Beyond Curriculum at Christ University and professor in education, a well-known educationist and expert on studies on St. Chavara. Sister Udaya CMC, is a research scholar at Christ University. She has already published many articles on St. Chavara. And as a common factor, we can say that all these, uh, all these resource persons have expertise on St. Chavara. Not only that, they are devotees. Personally, they are devotees of St. Chavara. A most cordial welcome to Father Joseph, Professor Kennedy, and Sister Udaya. May extend a cordial welcome to our invited guests, all the participants, especially the campus superiors, professors, and students of DBK, 
members of the CMC and the CMI congregations who have joined this conference, and all others who have who are with us for uh, this conference today. Before concluding, I would like to congratulate Father Jomon, Jomon Molayrikel and Father Emmanuel Kariyaburayda, the directors of this center, for organizing this conference. Welcoming you all once again. May I remain? Thank you. Thank you, dear Father Shaji, for your kind words of welcome. We are immensely blessed and honored to invite Father Dr. Paul Achandi CMI, the rector of Dharmaram College, for his benedictory address. Okay. Esteemed uh, Reverend Father Shaji, the Dean, Reverend Father Jomon, Reverend Father Emmanuel, and esteemed friends. At the very outset, may I congratulate DVK, especially the Faculty of Theology and the Center for the Study and Research of, uh, on Saint Kriya Koselia's Chaura for having organized this webinar on human capital formation. Explaining the kind of uh, hypocrisy in corporate life. Sometimes people say people are the greatest asset, but uh, at times people don't give uh, due respect. They are just sent away from the organization with uh, well, not very serious reasons. Now coming to history, there have been uh, four phases of economy. In every phase of the economy, there was a constrained resource and a critical asset. In the agricultural economy, food was the constrained resource and land was the critical asset. In the trade economy, distribution of goods was the constrained resource and transportation was the critical asset. In capital economy, tangible goods, production of goods were the constrained resource and capital was the critical asset. In the present services, information or knowledge economy, intellectual capital is the constrained resource and people are the critical asset. St. Kuriakos Elias Chavara lived in an agrarian economy. Then everyone invested in land for food and family needs. But being a great visionary, he took a different and prophetic stand and advocated his philosophy, people first. The first and best investment shall be in human capital. It was economist Theodor Schulz, the Nobel Prize winner in economics in 1979, who introduced the human capital theory, equating skills and knowledge of people for enhancing productivity. But St. Chavara understood the importance of human capital way back in the first half of the 19th century. And it is very much evident in his thoughts and actions. He writes very clearly in the Testament of Loving Father, parents understand that your most important duty and responsibility to bring up your children well, enhance human capital. The children are the treasures entrusted by God to you. They are the real treasure. They are the human capital. They are the real capital. As soon as the children come to the age of reason, they must be sent to school to enhance their human capital. Besides, parents should accompany the children in their learning process. We know it from the testament of the loving father. For Saint Chavara, Human resource development is developing resourceful human beings. This could be applicable even to the religious life and monasteries. That's why he said to his own members in the religious community, the strength of the monastery is in its people, not in its buildings or other financial resources. 
The strength of the monastery does not consist in the thickness of its walls, but in the people who dwell in them, the quality of the people. In order to have the potential of sustained competitive advantage, an asset or a resource must have four qualities. One, it shall be rare, it shall be inimitable, it shall be valuable, and it shall be non-substitutable. Like any other resource, this is also applicable in human resource. Hence, human resource development is the process of developing resourceful human beings who are rare, valuable, inimitable, and non-substitutable. This is exactly the Bishop Maurelli is told to our founding fathers in 1929. We have only a handful of priests like you. A handful like you means who are rare, valuable, inimitable, and non-substitutable to give the people of God the proper way. If you go for contemplative life, who will take care of them? That was the DNA and legacy of the founding fathers of CMI family. Secondly, St. Chavra himself developed his personal human capital through self-learning, learning from Malpan, and through ongoing formation. It's been a personal mission. As Reverend Father Kurita explained, his level of knowledge and expertise really reveal the kind of human capital formation he has undergone. So he is really a role model for everyone who wants to develop oneself in human capital formation. In order to enhance human capital, the very first venture he initiated was the establishment of a seminary and a process-driven seminary system to create quality leaders for the church. He realized uneducated priest or underdeveloped human capital cannot bring about strategic change or transformation in the society or cannot make a difference in the human capital of the society. Secondly, to strengthen the human capital formation, he focused on the education of the children. This was very well narrated by Reverend Father Kuritara in his address. He realized only a good school and an inclusive school of thought with quality can bring about quality change in society. St. Chaura writes, remove intellectual blindness by learning. Just as without eyes one cannot see the material things of the world, so also without knowledge, it will be impossible for us to see or understand the reality of this world and even the eternity of God. Can he emphasize the importance of learning and ongoing learning process? Chavar insisted upon that all children, irrespective of religion, caste, creed, should be admitted to the schools attached to the churches. Church was chosen as a center of education by Chavra, as it was ideal place for social anchoring to meet and teach. That was his Pallikudam revolution. Thirdly, as uh, Reverend Father Joseph rightly pointed out, printing press and publications were the next strategy to develop effective human resource. And anyone in the human resource development arena will bow down before him for his painstaking initiatives for the same. Finally, like Jesus had a human resource strategy of choosing and training and appointing apostles, St. Chavra's master stroke strategy was establishment of two contigations, CMI and CMC contigations to develop right human capital to bring about societal transformation. Because of that, these societies or two congregations became catalysts of change and transformation in the society. The establishment of a religious congregation for women was certainly an antidote to those socio-cultural evils existing at that point of time. 
That way, if you really look at the entire gamut of activities of St. Kuriakos Elias Chavara, he had this great focus, invest in people so that we will be investing in the future and to bring about equality, social justice, and welfare of the society, the nation, and the world. Hence, we have an excellent model in St. Kudiakos Elias Chavra in human capital formation. Today, that is our legacy to enhance our own competencies, our own human capital, and to work out a strategy, a human resource strategy to enhance the human resource cap development or human capital formation of the people with us or within our institutions. I do congratulate Reverend Father Jomon and Reverend Father Emmanuel for having organized this great event of webinar. I do wish wonderful time ahead. We have wonderful speakers in Father Joseph Kuritra, Kennedy Thomas, and Sister Udaya. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Father Rector, for your graceful and moving words. We are humbled and honored. I would like to introduce our three eminent speakers of this evening, beginning with Father Joseph Varghese CMI. Father Joseph Varghese CMI is a faculty in the Department of Mathematics at Christ Deemed to be University, Bangalore. Being a thorough and ardent mathematician, he has published research articles in international and national journals and authored and edited many books. And he has written tremendously about St. Kuriyako Silias Chavara, both in English and Malayalam. He's a research guide and many doctoral and MPhil researches have been completed under his supervision. He's a resource person in the fields of research, technology, oriental spirituality, and delivered multiple sessions and organized numerous seminars quizzes of national and international nature. He is a zealous member of various mathematicians forums and professional associations. Two, Dr. Andrew Thomas Kennedy. Dr. Andrew Thomas Kennedy is the director of Center for Education Beyond Curriculum and professor in School of Education at Christ Deemed to be University, Bangalore. He has published research articles in reputed international and national journals and authored and edited many books. He's a resource person in fields of research, education technology, and delivered multiple sessions and organized numerous national and international seminars. He's a research supervisor for doctoral scholars and numerous doctoral and MPhil researches have been completed under his guidance. He's an active member of multiple professional associations for the course of research and education. And very particularly, he's inspired, inspired by the life and legacy of St. Kuriakos Leas Chavara. Third, Sister Udaya CMC. Sister Udaya is a member of St. Mary CMC province, Tamarashedi, and she is a research scholar in Christ Deemed to be University, Bangalore. She holds a master's in history from the University of Calicut. She being a member of the religious congregation founded by St. Kuria Koseleas Chavara is an ardent devotee of him. She has published a number of research articles in international and national journals. The general theme of today's webinar, Human Capital Formation, is one of the orientations of her research work. She has many years of experience in the field of education and animation of students. Uh, now we shall begin the first paper. The Pedagogy of the Perseverant, Kuriakos Model, Father Dr. Joseph Verghese. Over to you, dear Father. Good evening. Is the screen visible to you? Yes, Father. Thank you, the organizers, for inviting me. This is a rare opportunity given to speak on the founder and father of the CMI congregation, St. Kuria Kosilias Chavara. It is apt that you have chosen this topic 
in 2021 to discuss human capital formation. I've chosen the topic, the pedagogy of the perseverant, the Kuriakos model. We are in 2021. What was the world in 1821? It's quite difficult at this point of time to imagine what was happening in 1821. When I checked some of the major events happened in 1821, this particular event gave me some inputs regarding how the world was and how the world is to be. The Napoleon, European conqueror, died in exile in 1821. In St. Helena. Kuriakos Elias was just 16. He was a seminarian. All his thoughts and visions of the future, possibly at the age of 16, and the actions that he had and the human capital he created and promoted in the next 50 years defined the world, especially Kerala. In a larger context, India, the next 150 years. We are in 2021. What is our plan for 21-21, 100 years later, if not, 20 to 21. Will any of our plans, any of your works now define the world, at least a certain area in this world for the next 10 years, 100 years, or 200 years? Will someone speak about us after 200 years? Now we are speaking about Kriyakos Elias Chaura after 200 years. This is a very example that how Kuriakos Elias, his models of human capital formation was relevant, is relevant, and will be relevant. Are we creating enough human capital to face 21-21? As the congregations, CMI and CMC, and the people we are catering to through Dharmaram Vidya Chetram and all the institutions that we are working in. Working towards creating human capital that is facing, that is to face not one or two years, 100 years or 200 years. Human capital. I was wondering how a theological faculty has chosen this topic. In a secular setting, it's purely an economical term, human capital. It is some total of skills that are embodied in a human being that can be converted into economic effects, especially in the form of money. Recently, World Bank had come with the Human Capital Index. It indicates what would be the expected productivity of a child born today as a grown-up relative to a benchmark of complete education and full health. It is evaluated in a scale of zero to one. If it is zero, it clearly shows that it is going to be zero productive. A most educated, a well nutritioned person with the full health, with the complete education, 
what is providing, what is expected to be providing is going to provide later, it is measured as one. So many of us probably would have got the chance of 0.2 or 0.2 point, 0.25 or something. World Bank is promoting, asking all the countries to work towards this index to be achieved as one. This is through the following areas, providing quality access to healthcare, lifting people out of poverty, and building equity. It's easy to say. It's easy to write. It's easy to preach. However, it needs a lot of perseverance. This is where I found a huge, huge potential in the CMI congregation as well as all the religious. Perseverance is a continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure or opposition. The Kuryagos model was with difficulties, failures, and oppositions. Most of us are thorough with life and works of Sin Kuryagos Elias Chavara. I might not describe many of the things in detail, but some of them I would connect with this particular aspect of human capital formation. All of us know that the foundation stone for the congregation was laid at Mananam on the 31st of May, 1830, 11th of May, 1831. There were numerous difficulties, failures, and oppositions, starting from the construction, leading to establishment, and then to penetrate to other areas of Kerala those times. One of the most difficult situations they faced was the division in the Catholic Church then. There was this system which many tried to cover up, the Padrivado Propaganda system, which divided the Catholic Church in the lines of Rome and Portuguese. It propelled people to fight against each other, even the neighboring parishes. There were parishes of the same rich locality, one was belonging to Padrivado, the other one was belonging to Propaganda. There were parishes where in which a part of the people was supporting Padrivado and other group of people was supporting Propaganda. Therefore, when Kuryagos Elias and his friends searched for money and materials, as he was belonging to Padrivado's side, it was very difficult to move forward to receive funds, support people. More than all these, there were priests and youth, they wanted to join this new movement, but since they were belonging to Padrivado, they were not able to join. In spite of this, several of them joined. You know, the situation in the early 19th century, due to several reasons, and due to non-fulfillment of the dream of becoming a religious congregation, several of them left the movement, and a good number of people died while being in Mananam, as young members, as well as priests who joined. Astonishingly, if you are looking at, even at the doorstep of getting the recognition as a former religious congregation. Two priests and eight seminarians left the monastery while the retreat for the first vows happened at Mananam in 1855. 
Cleopas was asked to leave Mananam twice. In 1832, he was transferred to Palipuram as a parish priest immediately within one year of the founding of the monastery when the construction work was going on. In 1864, almost at the prime age of his life, he lived only for 66 years. The place where he which he established, the place he has bloomed, and where all his activities are surrounded, he had to leave. He had to leave in 1864. He had to leave Mananam to Kunamau in 1864. the hope to have a former religious life in this land the desert to have an organized life of consecration in this the so called barren land helped him to face these difficulties failures and opposition for 24 years he waited to have his congregation formally established 1831 to 1855 imagine in a different scenario different setting if you are looking at when he received the permission it was a completely different congregation whereas it took only 6 years 1534 to 1540 for saint ignatius loyola to found the society of jesus as per the clarion call of the un as well as world bank governments are asked to invest in the human capital of their citizens than any other infrastructure sometimes when we are religious are much after building constructions purchases are we focusing on theological education secular education and other related activities building protecting and employing human capital are to be considered as national priority they have been prioritizing investments in human capital in many of the advanced countries and they have been undertaking difficult reforms sometimes in very challenging contexts the establishment of a sanskrit school in 1846 might be the first milestone in his contribution in this regard to and almost 170 years ago he was a champion of human habitual formation he thought church is a channel of social transformation church is a cradle of faith and future he has insisted that even at the cost of selling the golden crosses you must start schools and support the children his initiative of starting schools next to every parish was a starting point and educational revolution which embraced all irrespective of caste and creed his all aim was to improve human capital he believed that the literate people can create a nation of enlightened leaders and citizens thus he became the initiator of educational renaissance in kerala and possibly spanning all across india the knowledge and skills that an individual acquires through schooling form an important part of its human capital many of his writings he mentions how a child is to be formed what a child is to be reading how parents have to take care of children and what would be the best way a family has to take care of all the members in it 
the average number of years of schooling in a population is a proxy measure because a given number of years in school leads to much more learning in some settings than in others all the covid situation has changed it still people believe that being in a school being in education institution is a very important measuring factor of the human capital formation kuriya kosilia chavara introduced a noon meal scheme to keep the students in the school this was mostly done when there were not enough resources in the monastery printing press was at another important step in his model of human capital formation in the same year of establishing the school he founded the press in mandanam it also faced numerous difficulties failed attempts and opposition from within and outside of the monastery when there was no enough food for the people in the monastery he was searching for fund to buy ink find people to work there and to buy paper if you when you go through the history of sen kuriyakulis chavara biography of sen kuriyakulis chavara you continue the numerous travels he had conducted to establish the printing press as well as to buy paper and ink the licenses he required people he contacted eventually in 20th century we would come to know that around mandanam they are boomed large number of printing presses and publications several newspapers came from there and numerous magazines came from there in fact kottayam became the center of printing and publication for so many years he believed that his followers would read would love to read books than to tread bricks hope his vision his dream would continue to be there and then we also love to read books and write books and publish he was a believer in training the youth so that they feed their mouths rather than distributing money rather than distributing charity through materials he was a person in believing in training the youth the most important establishment towards that was the seminary establishment he himself had a good opportunity to learn many things from different people while being under the instruction of malpan thomas palakel he brought people from far and wide printed books supplied materials brought people from different religions to train the young seminarians so that these young seminarians become priests and they became the catapults of changes in the society he had the perseverance to be a writer many of us know about his background he did not have a formal education at the age of 11 or so he joined the seminary but when he was about to depart from this world he was almost mastering 11 languages and he was in the process of learning a new language while he was seriously sick 
during the last days of his life he wrote plays poems letters and chronicles which even now people wonder at looking at with a huge wonder how on earth a person with no computers no typewriters not enough papers can do this we have all these facilities with a computer or a laptop we can do much better things now are we able to write are we able to improve so that we would be living forever through our writings human capital formation is also about closing gender gaps he had the perseverance to establish the religious community for women he had a special concern for the vulnerable sections the disadvantaged the children the sick and he had several plans for this we know that from the history future if you lose significantly in terms of learning and non cognitive skills now then we lose heavily later in life and thereby many others depending on us the kuriagos model helps us to start from cognitive simulation in the early years to nurturing relevant skills in childhood and adolescence do not lose hope invest in young minds spend time in reading and writing multiply the talents our monasteries are not the graveyards of human capital but they are the grooming grounds of it our monasteries are not the asylums of the lazy but they are the looms of the learner thank you thank you father for that well researched and well articulated presentation thank you very much dr andrew thomas kennedy is influenced by the life and legacy of saint kuriako selias chawra this evening he is going to talk on saint chawra a visionary and inspiration for modern catholic education let us welcome dr andrew thomas kennedy esteemed and reverend fathers i am delighted to be here this evening to share the works of saint chawra in fact from the moment i was I read the CMI policy document way back about 20 years back when I was still te teaching in school I mean I was amazed how every aspect of the education process is imbued in that particular document and therefore uh, I'm delighted to be here and thank Reverend Father Joe Moon and for the manual for giving me an opportunity today well having said that uh, i'm a lay person and i'm not sure is it by accident or by choice that i'm here today but surely by the inspiration or an opportunity or a call by saint chawra well i'm not a scholar in chawra studies nor a theologian or a philosopher like many of you but for sure i got an opportunity to guide three doctoral work to investigate and research from the educational lens the work of saint chawra well having said that uh i put my conceptual framework i want to talk about this person saint chawra what was his vision and why he has inspired many people ordinary people like me and this is the great obligation of the catholic education and today christ institution the cmi congregation and the cmc congregations are in the forefront manifesting those great catholic ideals all right uh kuriakos elias chawra was a great visionary who envisaged the integral growth and the development of kerala and initiated several socio religious schemes for social development in the 19th century and i'm sure that all of you know that and among the several pioneering steps chawra embarked on the on for the growth of the church and the society his contribution to education is of special focus today well the person of saint chawra all of us know that he had a very humble beginning as uh, our father uh, joseph already mentioned 
born, I mean, born in 1805, did not have any basic education like most of us, but then he joined the seminary and then he mastered and he became a scholar in languages, not going to a formal institution, more by self-learning. He learned Malayalam, Tamil, Sanskrit, Latin, Italian, Portuguese, and Syria. So ordained as a priest on 29th November, 1929, and he founded the Congregation of Carmelites of Mary Immaculate, which manages Christ deemed to be university today. Well, an interesting development, he was, he became honored with the sainthood on 23rd November, 2016. Well, what uh, is the reflection on this person of Saint Chaura? I would say that he was a herald who defined education not only for his contemporaries, but for the forthcoming generations. And this vision became possible and is being carried forward by the band of the enlightened leaders from the CMIs and the CMCs. Now, what is this understanding of human capital? Now, when I, when I understand today, when we look at a prior general, a vice chancellor, a present vice chancellor who is a mathematician, our rector, a product of the, from the prestigious IIT, the president of DBK, well-known philosopher, a vice chancellor, a historian and so on. That is what is human capital. This is what triggered in me to understand this person. Is it because of the founder's vision, inspiring its members and ultimately enabling an existent human capital? In my opinion, the existent human potential, the, the potential human capital of the CMIs and the CMS, CMC is the offshoot of this vision. It has been made possible due to systematic education, spiritual formation and development programs. So, in 1846, as Father Joseph already mentioned, the first Sanskrit school, without disregarding any particular group of people based on caste and religion and gender, was started. In 1864, community participation in management of school, the era that kindled the formulation of the civil society, was the thrust. And what was the motive? education and empowerment and women folk. Well, Saint Chaura was a visionary leader of Kerala in the 19th century. He had a unique worldview. For him, every human being was a reflection of God and every action of Chaura was originated from his relationship with God and people. So he worked ceaselessly for the betterment of the society and to uphold human dignity. So what is the CMC uh, uh, congregations and their institutions doing today? What is Christ University doing to over 25,000 students? Look at the, uh, uh, the implications and look at the number of schools that they run today. I always say that it is a great movement inspired by this vision. For him, education was primarily a humanizing process. To understand the greatness of the education vision and other humanitarian activities of St. Chara at a critical time of Kerala, a short historical note is essential. And I'm sure that most of you uh, who have traversed the works of St. Chavra, you know, you know the challenges that uh, St. Chavra faced at that particular time. Well, life in Kerala society until the late 19th century was not based on the principles of social freedom and equality. Well, to put that in perspective, Trivandrum Cochin State Manuals explicitly recorded record regarding the educational backwardness of Kerala. Though exact statistics are is unavail un unavailable about the literacy rate of the 18th century and the beginning of the 19th century, there was high literacy for Brahmin boys and other castes below. Brahmins had gained a certain level of education from villages, schools called calories. Well, education level of the Christians, Muslims and Yelavas were almost nil. Lower caste like the Pulayas, Chirumars and others might not get any sort of educational facilities. Well, in short, 18th century literacy rate of Kerala was very low. 
the arrival of the European Missionaries, London Missionary Society and the Church Mission Society opened new era in the history of education. The missionaries' contributions became a sound foundation to the education of Kerala. Having said that, the intervention of the government in education in Travancore, one of the constituents of, the mod of modern Kerala, started in 1817 with the issue of royal rescript by Rani Gauri Parvati Bai, with the support of British resident Colonel John Munro, as per the royal edict promulgated by the princess, the state would thenceforth meet the whole cost of education of its people. Well, in 1868-69, grant and aid programs were initiated by the Travancore government, which facilitated contributions of the private agencies in the field of education. So large scale grant and aid system started in 1875 was another major important event from the part of government for cause of education. Well, the policy of extending grant and aid to indigenous schools continued during the 1880s, which increased the number of aided indigenous schools sharply. Well, though Roman Catholic missionaries had arrived before Protestant missionaries, they did not focus on education or established schools and did not encourage Catholics to go to the schools run by Protestants. So the Kota M. C. A. school record affirms this fact, which had only one Romo Syrian Catholic student in 1834 out of the total student strength, 60 students, that is 41 non-Catholic Syrians, 17 Nyers and one Brahmin students. Having said that, let me raise and understand what are the salient features of Catholic education. So Catholic higher education institutions can never be away from the sense of mission of uncompromising witness to, go to the gospel. So strong Catholic identity and fidelity to the mission is essential. Well, according to Pope Francis, Catholic higher education centers must be uncompromising witness to the church's moral te teaching and to resist efforts from whatever quarter to dilute and that this indispensable witness. Not only to preserve the Catholic identity, but also to defend and advance in Catholic identity must be specific to Catholic higher education. Well, that's what the institutions run by Christ University and uh, I, I, by the CMI congregations and the CMC congregations are doing just that. The overinfluence of secular values and interference of government policies had reduced the vigor that Catholic institutions face today to fulfill a sense of mission. But to recover such vision and vitality is more focused in the recent years. So having said that, apart from providing more opportunities and community service programs, Catholic institutions provide spiritual, sacramental, and ministerial support. In other words, Catholic education centers are expected to be informative as well as performative. They must be aware of social issues and concepts of social justice. In short, Catholic community services must make the individuals and society better. So in the Catholic higher education scenario or in education in general of the modern world, how Saint Chaura, an educationist come social reformer of the 19th century, remains a visionary and an inspiring force for a group of educators and leaders of the two congregations that he started and founded. And in turn, Catholic world at large is a focus of this presentation and it needs attention. Well, Saint Chaura, a visionary educationist, Chaura was a person of good, who always understood good from within and always searching for good around. According to him, they should be leaders of knowledge and spiritual enlightenment for the betterment of society. That is what is human capital formation. Chavara, Saint Chavara realized that the basic cause of this predicament of this, of this of a society at its times is ignorance and hence education is the best tool for social transformation. And look at what the two congregations are doing today. From his personal proficiencies and readings, he observed that intellectual 
and spiritual blindness are interrelated. So he emphasized enlightenment can make a person wise, so also real learning can make a person spiritual. Well, from his personal proficiencies and readings, as I already mentioned, that he observed that intellectual and spiritual blindness are interrelated. Now, according to Kachpali, though through wisdom towards wisdom is the kernel of Chavra's education vision. Through his prophetic foresight and ingenious mission, Saint Chavra spearheaded path-breaking social changes as pioneering educationalists with prompt initiatives and strategies. Well, having said that, does Saint Chavra deserve a place among educational visionaries? Why I'm saying this is because several great educational visionaries have made global transformation through education with a vision and mission. In the Indian context, there are several educational institutions that actualize the vision of their founders and their contributions are significant in the modern century. Though a few taken roots abroad, they play a vital role in the development of the Indian society. But here was Saint Chaura from our own soil who revolutionized the society. Let me quote, let me give you some examples. When we talk about the visionaries in education, we talk about the Jesuits, the Ignatian, they have this uh, evolving uh, from the Ignatian education philosophy. When we have the Salatian education vision, then of course, Vivekananda's education vision, and of course, from our own Kerala, Sri Narayan Guru's education vision. Well, the point that I'm trying to make is, among these visionaries, Saint Chaurav's vision needs a deeper and more vibrant interpretation of his educational vision. Well, let's understand what Venkatraman in 1987 said. He was vibrant educationalist of the 19th century with a dynamic personality and a broad vision. Hence the subject of Chaura needs, now I would say subject of Chaura, it can emerge as a separate discipline needs intensive research in the field of education. So as I mentioned, I had the opportunity to work with a couple of students. In fact, I'm still learning the real understanding of his vision and his inspiration. We made some attempts and uh, we have come out with an idea of the vision, an attempt to understand the vision articulation and interpretation through research. Now, if you look at this, the first doctoral work, of a scientific work, there was a, pro the, the work proposed what we call as a Chavra education vision actualization model. And, and that, this particular doctoral work is available in our library. And I'm sure that to get a little more deeper understanding of what this model is and its implications, definitely you can refer that. So well, the understanding is that the model emphasizes on certain ideas like the congregation itself, the vision, the Catholic identity, the transformational leadership, capacity building, school community, staff professionalism. Now, if you deconstruct all these ideas, it's actually the processes as our rector mentioned is the uh, basis for creating the human capital. Well, the second work, we looked at how the interpretations of the work of St. Chaura can have modern implications for modern management. In fact, for the, in the coming years, I'm wondering, can we have somebody, a couple of researchers who can understand the administration the uh, competency building process of, from the works of St. Chaura. And therefore, if you looked at this particular model, once again, value consciousness, holistic development, empowerment, inclusion, 
quality, maintenance, social commitment, knowledge creation, and of course, the understanding of Chabra Vision that becomes the core of this particular model. And that's the basis for creating human uh, capital. And therefore you need transformational leadership, you need organizational socialization, and the institution, the congregations will have to become a learning organization. Well, the third model that's in the process now talks about actualization of educational vision of Korea Co's Elias Chawra. And once again, from the interpretations of his vision, vision we are looking at vision sharing, religious formation, holistic education, awareness program, and family collaboration as the core of the vision. And there are certain enabling factors like how you look at, in fact, I was amazed by visiting several of our institutions, how the managements of uh, the congregations are benevolent in plowing back, uh, you know, uh, investment into education to build human capital. And that's the reason why as a important uh, variable higher educational facilities was investigated upon for the process of formation of human capital. So having said that, what are the visionary ideas? According to Chawra, education was the best means to transform the individual from narrow boundary of the self, enabling him or her to do good for the society. And life without this altruistic dimension was meaningless for him. Now, from his vision comes the inspiration for all of us. For more than one and a half century, what we see is the manifestations of the institutions building the lives of several people, not only the key stakeholders, the students, but look at the families that the congregations are influencing, right? For more than one and a half century, Chawal's vision has been inherited and continued with commitment in the field of education by these two congregations. Well, Catholics, because of the above mentioned backgrounds and due to the absence of a visionary leader lagged behind the field of education, and it was in this context that St. Chawra became a visionary. He took significant steps to start schools in order to spread education for all walks of people, including unprivileged groups. Well, having said that, look at CMI institutions, how they harvest and enhance innovativeness. Post COVID, if it was during the time of St. Chawra when he started the printing press, the same vision is manifested how we manage the post COVID crisis because of that power of that vision. Today we have the virtual reality where students use, students and teachers and the academics use virtual reality pedagogical tool and student learning. We use multiple platforms and St. Shara was a herald who defined education not only for its contemporaries for the forthcoming generations. So that's the explanation of the power of his inspiration. Well, St. Chavra made a clarion call to initiate education as a mission of the church. And regarding this transformation, going by the writings of Tarakan, but in the second half of the 19th century, Syrian Catholic leaders made calls for educational development to soon both fruit. As a result, by 1908 itself, the Catholics, particularly the Syrian Catholics, had the highest number of Christian schools in Travancore and Cochin. And the rest is history. I won't go into the details of these because a lot of writings and works have already been established. But to cut it short, let me put this across and say today it is necessary that these two congregations, the CMI and the CMCs, are in fact inspired and making all efforts to, to come out with this actualization of the vision of St. Chawra. And following the education vision of Chawra, many more educators of CMI and CMC congregation raised the educational contributions to the congregations to high status that it is today. So all our educational institutions aim at excellence, both in academic and co-curricular fields, as educational agencies of the state with specific apostolic dimension of Catholic Church, our institutions try to uphold Catholic identity 
respecting the multicultural, multi-religious, and multilinguistic community. Sir, uh, sorry to cut in. Would you like yeah. to conclude? Yes. So I would like to uh, come to the last slide, which basically talks about the formation of human capital. So the process is that by definition, there are three key aspects, experience, skills, and power of edification. So at our university and in most of our institutions, I think it's a manifestation of these aspects which are put into practice for the benefit of building the human capital. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Andrew Thomas, for the both enlightening and enticing presentation. Thank you very much. A gentle reminder, dear attendees, please have some questions ready, and it is good to post them in the chat, chat box below. We have question and answer session at the end. Yes, the last and final presentation of today's webinar, Promotion of Human Capital Formation, a Typology of Life and Vision of Korea Koselias Chavra by Sister Udaya CMC. Over to you, dear sister. Reverend fathers and sisters, good evening, everyone. First, I convey my sincere thanks to their organizers for offering me this chance of presenting this paper. Let me get into the topic on promotion of human capital formation, a typology of life and vision of Kuriakos Elias Chavara. Human capital formation indicates the procedures of attaining and increasing the number of individuals who have the skills, education, and experience which are critical for the country's entire development. Adam Smith, the father of modern economics, spoke about four types of fixed capitals. First one, machines and instruments. Second, buildings and revenues. Third, land. And fourth, useful abilities of the inhabitants or the members of the society. Human capital is unique and differs from other capitals. The abs absence of adequate investment in human capital, utilization of physical capital will be low paced, leading to retardation of development. Human capital is a collection of all knowledge, skills, abilities, intelligence, experiences, health, and training that can be used directly to achieve the goals of a nation or state. A society that consists of such well-trained individuals promotes the growth of a nation. These not the buildings, roads, or bridges that determine the development of a nation. The nation's human resources have built through a well-defined system of education that forms the standards of development. Education is a key element of human capital formation. It is the unique medium by which the accumulated knowledge, skills, and values of one generation are transmitted to another generation, ensuing in the spiritual, mental, intellectual, and physical formation of every man and woman. Kerala holds a higher position in terms of various directions of social and human growth among the many states in India. The Kerala development model has been widely admired for achieving a high human development index compared to developed countries. There is a link between Kerala's growth and the educational system that prevailed here. The active intervention of the religious men and women in the human formation programs and value-oriented education made differential changes in the society. Chavara has done one of the outstanding reforms in the 19th century, which greatly influenced Kerala society. His vision and farsightedness contributed to the rapid growth of education in Kerala. He launched a process of educational endeavors, and he believed that 
these educational endeavors would help the integral development of a person and thus transform the society. Theories of human capital formation. Human capital formation is supported strongly by various theories and ideas. First one, human capital theory. Becker first formalized this theory in the early 1960s, although others developed it contemporaneously. The theory of human capital suggests that investing in individuals make them efficient. The creation of human capital also promotes better development of the workforce through investment in education and training. The intellect of people, their satisfying work energy, positive attitude, reliability, determination, willingness to learn, imagination, creativity, and desire to share information makes a difference that leads to human capital innovation. Second theory, theory of performance. The theory of performance by Don Elger develops the four functions of management, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. These four functions are to determine the performance of a person. An individual or a group of individuals participating in a collective effort may be a performer. These four management functions are essential for the effective functioning of an institution. Third, theory of reinforcement. B.F. Skinner proposed the theory of reinforcement and he suggested that training and development programs expect positive outcomes and must be aligned with the objectives of the organization. The basic suggestions of this theory can be materialized in training and development programs by incorporating various teaching techniques available in human resource practices. This the theory propounds the need for the training program for the successful implementation of human resources. As these theories stipulate, the CMI and CMC congregations and educational institutions conduct numerous programs to develop the talent of the religious students and faculty members. The programs conducted for the growth of young generations are valuable assets and the activities enhance the holistic development of future generations. Factors of human capital formation. Four factors which lead to the formation of human capital. First, quality enhancement, training, skill enhancement, and human resource planning and distribution. Quality enhancement. According to Harvey, quality enhancement is a way to add or to improve. It has two threats. First, to develop each person, that is the development of qualities, knowledge, skills, abilities, and competence. Second, to improve the quality of an institution or learning program. St. Chavara was well aware about the importance of quality enhancement. He knew that the progress of the church and the society was possible only through learned priests and thus introduced different language studies in monasteries. In 1856, when priests were sent for ministry to different places, Chavara reminded that the transformed attitude of people and their integral formation must be the most valuable and visible fruit of the congregation. His discernment and forethought made possible the Indian society to arrive at the incredible position in the education field that it has obtained today. He took authoritative steps to standardize the quality of education. He provided the best teacher, sufficient place and infrastructure, midday meal program, which was most needed at that time, printed materials for the best education. Chavara could offer education with all developmental aspects and renovated the field with new ideas. Second, training. Bradwell and Holden argued that training is a structured process used to change attitudes, knowledge, skills, and behaviors through learning knowledge to achieve success 
in a particular job or career. The proper formation of a person has paved the way for the transformation of the society. As a reformer, Saint Chavara was well aware about the importance of training among priests and nuns. He knew that the proper training enhanced the quality of a person. For example, he appointed expert persons to train sisters. In 1870, he took a special interest in bringing two European sisters from Fort Kochi to the Kunama to give training in needlework, stitching, and flower making. During that period, this type of training was unknown to the women folk. The effort taken by Chavara was the roadmap to the nuns for developing their skills and knowledge. And later, it paved the way for the formation of thousands of women and thus the society became transformed. As the followers of Chavara, CMI and CMC institutions concentrate on training the persons for a better society. Third, hill enhancement. In today's age of globalization and technological explosive, skill enhancement is an important instrument to increase the efficiency and quality of a person and productivity. It is a powerful tool to empower individuals and improve their social acceptance. Three different skills a leader should have, namely technical skills, human skills, and cognitive skills. Technical skills refer to the knowledge and technology required for a particular type of work or profession. This may require specialized knowledge to implement specific methods, techniques, processes, and procedures. Human skills needed to work efficiently with subordinates, peers, and managers. These include communication and writing skills, the ability to inspire others to build a positive team spirit. A leader with the best skills will know about their behavior and how this can affect the members. Comprehension skills refer to skills that allow the leader to think critically and work with ideas and thoughts. Leaders with good cognitive skills have the ability to work with comprehensible ideas and considering situations. In this 21st century, multinational companies consider a person to be skillful if they have the 12 abilities. They are critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, social skills, productivity, flexibility, technology, literacy, media literacy, information literacy, leadership, and initiative. Uriakos Elias Chavara was a man who identified the power of skills to enlighten society. The initiatives Chavara took in the field of education originated from his mind, the source of which was his extraordinary personal charisma. Chavara himself was a versatile genius, an orator, dedicated teacher, social reformer, talented organizer, a true visionary, gifted poet, playwright, multilinguistic, and imaginative media person. These skills and talents were active in Chavara in a century when such ideologies were very uncommon. For example, to improve non skills and abilities, he sent books to develop reading habits and improve the knowledge of nuns and girls. He gave great importance to teach them different languages, and he was keen on improving their knowledge. Sisters wrote their chronicles. Our prior action gave us four books printed both in Latin and Malayalam. Along with spiritual books, he provided books on geography, mathematics, and grammar. It indeed conveys the intention of the founder to share his knowledge and experience with the members of the institute he founded. Fourth, human resource planning and distribution. It can be defined as a strategy for acquisition, utilization, improvement, and preservation of the human resource of an institution or congregation. 
the objective is to provide the right personnel for the right work at the right time and possible utilization of the existing human resources. The major activities of human resource planning includes forecasting, that is future requirements, inventory, present strength, anticipating comparison of present and future requirements and planning necessary program to meet future requirements. Effective resource allocation becomes crucial for the success of an institution. Saint Chavara was a far-sighted man and his future-oriented planning goes beyond the ages. Human capital formation and individual development were active visions of Kuryakos Elias Chavara. Through his vision, thousands of religious members empowered by CMI and CMC congregations brought tremendous changes in the education field and it goes to turn the society. Promotion of human capital by St. Kuryakos Elias Chavara. Human capital formation is associated with an investment in man and his development in a creative and productive manner. Chavara was a man who invested his total abilities and skills productively. He was an idealistic visionary, realized the importance of creating, maintaining, and utilizing human potentials, which will benefit society in the future. He was a profound scholar, an educationist, master builder of educational institutions, founder of religious congregations, and forerunner of the establishment of the poor and the marginalized. His educational innovations were evident at various levels, such as theological education and systematic formation of clergy through seminaries, women education and empowerment through the women religious congregations, Sanskrit school and education of children through schools attached with churches. The education expected and foreseen by Chavara was a perfect blend of intellectual, practical and moral formation of a person. He was focused on accomplishing his dream by providing education, initiating social and cultural development, thereby promoting the entire society. Kuryako Silias Chavara realizing the importance of knowledge and he wrote, just as without eyes, one cannot see the material things of the world, so also without knowledge, it will be impossible for us to see or understand the reality of the world. He knew that an educationally empowered person, that is a person through education having built the quality to control their lives and become stronger and independent could do wonders for the entire community's development. For the actualization of his vision, he took authoritative steps to train priests and seminary was started at Mananam in 1833. In 1866, with the same vision, he instituted the first indigenous religious congregation for women at Punamau. He marked it a point to train nuns to enhance human capital formation along with religious formation. The members of the two congregations have been empowered with the latest resources available at the time, which directly impacted the empowerment of the society. Later, the legacy of Chavara is spread through different institutions headed by CMI and CMC. A research study conducted among the 190 religious faculty members working in higher education institutions regarding with the formation of human capital the study shows that training, skill enhancement, and quality enhancement are the three highlighted factors which lead to formation of human capital. Human capital formation is emphasized in each of the institutions for the fact that it reforms the society with new vigor from time to time. Just you can see the result on the screen. The first table explains the results of coding references by 30 interviews among religious faculty members. And the second table shows the correlation results of formation of human capital and actualization of educational vision of Kuryako Elias Chavara. And the third is the graphical representation of the coding references of the data.
according to the data formation of human capital of religious members in the area of skill development quality enhancement training programs human resource management training knowledge development academic competencies awareness programs seminars workshops etc are essential to improve the quality of the congregation and the institutions the general and provincial education managers of the two congregations should be aware of the status and human capital potential of the religious faculty members and give them a chance to develop their human potential for the betterment of the society it will help to improve the vision of chavara in each individual and transmit the effect to the entire world let me conclude saint chavara was a single person but with multi dimensional aspects founder of religious congregations formator of priests and nuns pioneer of catholic print media champion of education social reformer multilinguist literary contributor collaborator of women empowerment torch bearer of families defender of church unity apostle of eucharist and holy family above all a man after god's own heart so saint chavara is a model for promotion of human capital in the field of religious formation educational reforms and social reforms as present the cmi congregation has about 3000 members and cmc has about 6500 sisters if these two congregations are molded fully based on human capital formation of saint chavara model we will build a new world thank you thank you reverend sister udaya for that wonderful and engaging presentation thank you very much thank you once again all the speakers now it's time for discussion again thank you for posting your questions and concerns during the sessions we'll also be taking direct questions from our audience you can unmute your mic and put forward your questions and for convenience and interaction let us keep it this way any of the panelists can answer the questions uh, with that being said here we have the first question it's from brother doni cmi he asks do you think that the national education policy which was approved by the union cabinet of india on 29th july 2020 will be enriched if it gives due importance to human capital formation as envisaged by saint kuria koselias chavra nep has enough elements for the human capital development um and uh, it need not necessarily uh, inculcate uh, the or incorporate uh, catholic ideal because the very constitution of india and then many other policies that came after has huge influence um are highly influenced by uh, catholic ideals especially our catholic uh, vision of education there is no doubt in that and the the new integrated uh, vision of education of course there are some pitfalls but uh, setting it aside it has got a, a huge visionary uh, uh, motivation and hope uh, this is going to have a uh, very seminal impact in the future of the country yes so, thank you father yeah. can i add uh, uh, a point to that what father joseph has mentioned yes yes i think course, uh, in fact uh, the national policy focuses on holistic development integral development which is actually the essence of catholic education and if anybody reads the national policy most christian institutions including like ours are already in the process of uh meeting the objectives of the national policy thank you father thank you very much and another question uh, it's from brother edwin daniel value education was very much part of chavara's vision but sometimes too much stress on individual uh, intellectual education is given Uh, in the present system of our education system how can we bridge this gap uh, 
there is a fine balance that is required i am uh, sometimes i'm concerned about the way in which our own cmi schools uh, how we go after this uh, market driven uh, education system uh, starting from lkg onwards so that is uh, getting penetrated uh, in all aspects and especially in the university education too however we tried our best one of the uh, severest uh, uh, um, probably criticisms on our education system especially through christ is the insistence of this holistic education but we made sure that uh, living it whatever is the thing that is going to happen we would continue with the holistic education and we have insisting that even it is not explicitly expressing the value based education however implicitly as well as many of the teachers come and uh, report to us that uh, if not this it is just uh, like any other institution only so it is a single most thing that we are doing however look at the way in which our uh, i am not just uh, 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 no, uh, no uh, criticizing is too much our system but the way in which our kg then higher secondary education where mostly uh, uh, this need based or uh, entrance exam based education system some of our schools even are been completely written off given to some of these training centers and uh, priests are just sitting there as principals that has to be changed and we have to seriously look into human formation and i'm adding to the answer uh, the the one answer that is posted by the question to the question posted by professor uh, uh, yeah father shaji kochadara regarding the post covid situation how do we respond to this very in the same line so i can spring, uh, think about um, human formation is the most important thing that we are looking at uh, this digital environment is uh sometimes killing it is grueling and uh, we cannot go with this so much but you do see the inclusive approach this has got we can reach to any level anywhere because of this uh, online education therefore fine mix of online as well as offline education uh direct as well as indirect education uh definitely every cmi institutions every catholic institution has to embrace and we have to use the potentials of online education not discarding the the good of the the direct education that is going to happen in the schools and colleges we may come with a, a very good solution we already have been trained uh, for hybrid education we might continue with that too yes thank you father uh, there is one more question and that is to professor dr kennedy based on the vision and style of saint chavra what response would you propose for the post covid times well uh, in the post covid times uh, right now it's only an emergency situation and uh, if at all if we were uh, we understood the vision that very strong we are able to cope with the situation but nothing like getting back to our normal situation where the learning experience is face to face and you know uh, the human capital development is contextualized on uh, learning experiences on a day to day basis so it's a temporary phenomenon and uh, in the post covid situation i'm sure that things are going to change and uh, uh, the holistic development and integral development of individuals would be back again yes thank you sir there is one more question from brother lijo chavara style of formation was indeed activity oriented not merely theoretical how can we restructure our schools and colleges giving due importance to learning by doing and what are the challenges for such an attempt especially countries like india Uh, well i think uh, we have uh, enough opportunities to i mean today uh, we have to move from the rote memory approach to more experiential learning so we have adequate pedagogies and uh, approaches by which uh, uh, institutions and learners can uh, benefit so uh, that's the only way that uh, we could shift from uh, being more theoretical to more practical experience all right any attendees would like to raise a question please do right now
Please unmute your mic and yes, father. Yes, yes. A question to Sister Odeya. So uh, you actually said how Chavara uh, was trying to empower women and also particularly through the CMC congregation giving the best training so that they can empower women. Uh, just a question, in the, in the present context, surely we speak about uh, empowered women even more. But as a congregation, not only yours, the religious congregations, the women's religious congregations, are they playing the sufficient role in empowering women in the society? Uh, just a, a kind of comment or your observation about that. Thank you, Father, for the um, good question. Then I think all congregations provide ample opportunities for the development of nuns. Then the way Chava, of receiving me, that... I am asking more about empowering women, others. Not only oh. empowering uh, the ah, members yes. of the congregation, but with the wider society. Yes, um, there is some limitations, but... Uh, most probably the uh, women religious congregations did so many things for the uh, social activities, for the society. Uh, for Mainly for the upliftment of the women folk and the women child, girl child, on the girl child. In that realm, the congregation uh, uh, did wonders in that uh, recent years as a social uh, reform manner. Uh, uh, just to Thank add uh, to uh, uh, Sister's um, uh, answer to this question, uh, I think uh, the congregations like Sisters, uh, the CMC, and uh, many institutions which are basically working for women empowerment I have to relook at their strategy for human capital formation. As I basically try to define what human capital formation is that it involves three processes. So what are the skills now and what are the skills that they might require in future, which Father Joseph was already mentioning. So what is the kind of experience that they need to go through and how we strengthen them to the power of edification. I think if we very meticulously and carefully plan that, I think the empowerment of women in the right direction will happen and it's up to the institutions thank you sir we have almost um, crossed the stipulated time um, i think that was the last question um, now uh, i would like to welcome uh, sister dr bina cmc uh, she is the directress of nanodaya a training institute for the junior age sisters affiliated to dharma ramvidyak kshetram bangalore she is also a much sought after person in the area of formation and spiritual theology. She has years of experience in northern east, northeast, eastern part of India, bringing good news to the people of God. I wholeheartedly welcome Sister Bina to propose a word of thanks. Thank you, Father Laichu. So let me come to the point. Gratitude makes sense of your past, brings forth today and creates a vision for tomorrow, a warm and cherished evening to all. First of all, my sincere thanks to Almighty God for making today's event a grand success. By his blessings and grace, we are able to make the event what it was. I would like to express my gratitude to our Honorable Rector, Reverend Father Paul Achanti, who gave his vital time from his busy schedule to grace this meeting. Thank you, Father, for your beautiful and thought-provoking message. And we are truly enlightened by your knowledge and delighted by your presence. I would like to thank Reverend Father Kurian Kachapalli, the president of DVK, who has always been a source of unwavering support and cooperation. I most sincerely thank him. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Father Shaji George Kochtara, Dean Faculty of Theology, for being the catalyst that inspired us to do our best 
in organizing this event. Thank you very much, Father. My heart is filled with appreciation and admiration for our distinguished guest speakers, Dr. Joseph Vogis Kuritara, Dr. Andrew Thomas Kennedy, and Sister Udaya CMC for not only sparing their precious time for us, but also for enriching us with their wisdom. I'm happy to note that all of you have done justice to our topic and presented St. Chavra in a new perspective. Thank you all for clarifying our doubts and answering our questions on human capital formation and especially Chavra's vision and inspiration as model for modern Catholic education, its pedagogy and the typology of life. We really owe you a lot. Thank you very much. Conducting this annual Chavra lectures would have been impossible without the zealous efforts of directors and secretaries. So with profound gratitude, we thank Father Joman Mullerikel and Father Emmanuel Kari Freedom, the directors of the Center for Study and Research on Kuriakos Elias Chavra and the secretaries, brothers Laiju, Edwin and Doni for their tireless efforts and commitment in, in bringing this event to a good conclusion. I would like to thank the Nyanodia Juniors for their lovely singing as well. I also want to thank Brother Laiju Savior for neatly comparing the program. Thanks are due to Father Rafi Kadavi, Mr. Babu Raj, and Mr. Sri Chesh for their technical assistance. I express my sincere gratitude to all the participants who made this event really a great. A big thanks to each and every one of you. Thank you one and all. Thank you, dear sister Bina, for winding up this webinar with your fitting word of thanks. Gratitude makes sense of a past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. May I take this opportunity to bid thanks to all the dignitaries of this evening, I would like to express a heartfelt gratitude to our beloved speaker, Father Dr. Joseph Fergus, Professor Dr. Andrew Thomas Kennedy, and Reverend Sister Udia CMC for spending your valuable time with us. We have been enriched and motivated by your reflections about human capital formation. I also would like to thank the audience for your courteous and kind listening. Many thanks to all those who worked behind this venture. Your hard work and great participation truly made this webinar a memorable one. Thank you all. Let us now pause for DVK and the Jayatva Vidya Chetra Bhava Bhanu Bharati Naisman Vidya Amradam Jayatva Vidya Chetra Bhava Bhanu Bharati Naisman Vidya Amradam Dharma Chetra Tvamaksharam Param Rekshidam Isha Bhakti Parajnanam Asuram Tava Vajra Bhashanam Tattva Darshanam Vishwesha Chindanam Dhyano Basanam Sobhanam Tava Jeevanam Jayatva Vidya Chetra Bhava Bhanu Bharati Naisma Vidya Amradam Sarva Dharma Marga Vedanam Sarva Jana Vaitri Chodanam Pavanam Tava Sevanam Punya Tirtha De Vajananu Dhyane Paramadarsho Madamariya Jayatva Vidya Chetra Bhava Bhanu Bharati 
Thank you all once again. Have a great evening.